All right, guys, let's talk about EDC while traveling. Should your EDC change while traveling? And the answer to that is yes, it should. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. Should your EDC change while traveling? No. In a perfect world, you should be able to take your 11 and a half inch carbine, stick it in your vehicle, and go for a road trip. Yeah. Without any issues, but unfortunately, you can't. We live in a world, in a country, with really, really stupid rules and laws about FBRs. Even if this were an AR-15 pistol, yeah, it's more dual as an AR-15 pistol, but still, this is going to require, let's say that you have an SB Tactical SBA4, which by the way, duh, I'm going to be doing a video on that thing. That thing is brilliant. This is an actual SBR. This is an 11 and a half inch that I built. It's an actual SBR. This is a CTR. But um, the point that I'm getting at is I have to have a dedicated bag for this, okay? I have a very discreet bag that I'll do, that I'll do a video on, but even still, this is a whole lot of oomph to have with me. So I avoid being that guy in the, in the hotel. And I'll give you what I'm talking about. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about by being that guy. I've been to 62 classes at this point. And I've learned over many years of doing this that if I'm driving more than two hours from home to a training venue, I automatically am going to get a hotel for the night. Because I don't want to show up the next day to class having gotten out of bed at the crack of dawn you know, race through traffic to get to class on time. And by the way, those guys are usually the ones that are showing up late to class. Excuse me. So, um, burn a hotel stay. The reason that that's important is the night before the class, I don't know who, who, who is who. I'm in, the par I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the parking lot or I'm in the lobby of the hotel. And I, I will admit, I sometimes play the who's who game. And I watch people. I'm, I'm a people watcher, always have been. And Sometimes it is as blatant as the guy in the Hummer with all of the stupid stickers on his vehicle that say gun. And his very appearance is just gun. And this guy rolls through the hotel lobby with all of his armament, just screaming, rob me, I'm stupid. Then, um, then the next day getting ready to go to class, he's the guy who's just the stink in the nostrils of everybody in the hotel because he's banging around and clattering around and he's just, he's a problem. That guy basically says gun. Or you're the guy who says, I'm going to a pistol class, so I'm going to leave this at home. As much as I want to have this with me, I'm going to leave it at home. And you change everything that you do. You change what you do and you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to completely alter how I pack, how I move around, um, most especially from the standpoint of the vehicle that I drive is not going to have any stickers on. I, you know, you wouldn't think that the discussion of EDC while traveling would include your vehicle, but guys, this actually begins with your vehicle. Um, your vehicle should have nothing on it that says gun. Uh, I have never driven any vehicle except for my patrol car. I've never driven any vehicle that says gun. Um, all these stickers that come with things, I either give them to people or I throw them in the trash. I cannot tell you how many Magpul stickers I have thrown in the trash can because I'm not going to stick them anywhere. I'm not going to stick them on my computer. I'm not going to stick them on my water bottle. I'm sure as hell not going to stick them. Well, I'm not going to say that. Uh, there are certain things I'm not going to stick them to. Okay. Um, I have dramatically had to change how I do things. One of the things that I chose to do was when I travel light, if I'm going for, if I'm going somewhere that requires a little extra clothing, then I will pack in um, something bigger than this. This is a 35 liter, boy, that was a really weird way to present this. Let me start that one over. If I'm traveling light within a week-ish, this is a 35 liter uh, bag from the North Face, and frankly, I forget the name of the bag. Great bag. Um, oh, Surge. Yeah. Um, actually, this is actually the bag that I use for school. I'm in college now. Um, this is my EDC everyday bag. No, I don't have a firearm with me at school. Really wish I could, but can't in Tennessee yet. We're working on that. This is the bag that I use um, when I'm not in class. My, my weapons are secured in the vehicle, and I do mean secured in the vehicle. Um, the setup of this bag is designed for travel purposes. To expand, you'll notice how much that expanded when I undid the side clips. Um, I recently packed for a cruise in this bag, and frankly, could have made it, 
but I knew that I was going to need a little bit of extra room for some souvenirs that I was planning on buying while in Mexico. So I went ahead and packed in a slightly bigger bag, but initially everything I needed for the cruise fit comfortably into this bag. Um, for just a domestic trip, bro, this bag will cover you and then some. Um, the pockets on either side of this bag, what I really like about them is you have dedicated... Oh, I can't believe I did that. You have dedicated pockets. You have dedicated pockets in this bag. These two pockets are stacked one on top of another and they both go completely across. On this side, I keep a headlamp because yes, part of EDC is lighting. Remember guys, EDC isn't just gun, it's, it's a bigger picture. I've got um, extra toboggan caps in here for cold weather. Um, the, the, the headlamp that I've got is a Tika from Petzl, and it actually has um, batteries. Uh, where is it? It's got batteries that it runs off of that are very similar to cell phone batteries. But there it is. They're very similar to cell phone batteries, but they're called Core, Petzl Core, and the battery charges on a USB charger. And. Um, it allows you to drop a fresh one in here, take the one that's in here, charge it with a USB cord. And then on this side, I've got a pocket that will easily accommodate my sidearm. And it'll store it in there just fine. So if I've got to get out of my gun for any reason, or my spare gun, which is normally in here, um, it, uh, oh, oh, and I should, I should add this. Um, there, my primary EDC weapon is a Glock 19. My primary EDC is a Glock 19 without a weapon light on it. My nighttime um, gun for traveling in hotels is a Glock 19 with a um, uh, with an Enforce um, APLC, the really small one. Um, I my home defense gun is a Glock 17 with a uh, X300U or whatever that thing is, the Surefire. But for travel purposes, I try to have the same gun across the board so that everything, all my mags and everything works the same way. So for hotel, in the hotel, I will take my EDC, I'll slide it into the bag, I'll take out the one that's in here, verify that it's loaded. And it's not so much that it sits beside me on the nightstand, but it sits in the room where I can get to it. Now the beauty of traveling, um, let's go back to the hotel thing. The beauty about traveling in hotels you are now sort of in a homogenous state, meaning that you're just one more person in that hotel. When you're in your home, it's you, it's Abner. It's Abner in his home, right? But when I'm in a hotel, I'm one of anything from, what, 80 rooms to 800 rooms, depending on where I'm staying. Right. But when I'm doing the hotel, if I'm home, it's Abner at home. If I'm traveling, I am just one person in a room in a hotel, say Hampton Inn, I don't know, 100 rooms, right? I'm one of 100, minimum 100 people in that hotel. So I'm able to kind of hide in the crowd with EDC. Guys, EDC is, is more than just firearms. It's how you dress, how you pack, um, what you carry, um, knives, for example. My knife is a TDI K-Bar knife in a Galloway Precision TDI knife holder that um, clips very easily to my belt. My belt is an Aux Tactical. Um, guys, this is hands down the best belt I've ever had. Love this thing. Um, this G-hook is, um, is anodized aluminum. Uh, it's, it's machined, anodized aluminum, it's very, pre very precisely made, the angles are very nicely beveled. This thing, guys, you saw how fast I took it off and how very quickly, in fact, I'll, in fact, I'll just put it on for you while I'm talking. Um, when you go looking for EDC gear, you have to say to yourself, what do I need? What do I not need? Where am I going? What will I be doing? Um, the last thing that I want is to stick out in such a manner that that I end up drawing really, really negative attention to myself because people are watching what I'm doing, they're watching what I'm wearing, 
And as, as you guys see me, this is my rain shirt, which is why it's got a bunch of runs in it from where the Glock is always catching it. But this is what I wear. You guys know this about me. This is what I wear when I'm out and about. Uh, the last thing that, uh, let me grab it real quick. The last thing I'll leave you with, the last thing I'll leave you with is this. When traveling, if you are um, doing the airplane thing, and uh, there are ways to travel with firearms, I no longer check firearms into the belly of the aircraft because, bro, you are asking for so much trouble. You're asking to lose a firearm. Uh, look, there are instructors. Um, in fact, I don't think Dave Spaulding would mind me saying this at all. Dave Spaulding of Handgun Combatives has flat out told me and has told me and other class members like openly he says I don't travel with guns anymore I've learned to live out of a backpack for over a week a backpack this is 35 liters I've learned to live out of a backpack for over a week he's got a Pelican case where all of his crap goes into including firearms and it gets shipped and the guys fact you can ship a firearm to yourself and the party that you're, that you're sending it to, whether it be friend or family member, can receive that firearm as long as they don't open that box. Everything's cool, right? You show up, you're holding the keys, right? So you show up, you unlock the box, you get your guns out, you teach your class, you're done, you drop them back in, you, you padlock it, and you ship it back to yourself. That's the way to do it. One of the reasons that I carry this right here, I have my own version of this that I made uh, a couple years ago. I frankly don't know where it is right now. Um, it is a it's a trigger guard holster for a Glock, and it does that right there, and it does a really nice job of hanging on to the gun. What I like about this thing is, it passes through your belt, and you pass it back through itself. Pull it taut, snap the gun to it. Gun goes down the front of your trousers, right? You're less likely to shoot yourself in a doober do with this than you are with holstering because remember, before you holstered, you did what? Muzzle in a safe direction, clipped it on, then put it in. So you're actually not going to shoot yourself with this. The reason I like this is if I'm going somewhere, and let's say that I'm not shipping my gun to myself, but I'm going somewhere and something really stupid cracks off in America, trust me, I can get my hands on a gun. I can get my hands on a gun because remember every knucklehead out there that's got their NRA sticker and their Magpul sticker and all their little gun stickers on their vehicles. Oh yeah, I can get my hands on a gun if I have to. But it would be nice to have a holster for that gun, wouldn't it? If I've got to make my way back to my family, whether it be through a rental car, on foot, or whatever the case may be, sure would be nice to have something with me that would allow me to safely have a firearm with me, right? That's why I travel with one of these everywhere I go. This goes right through um, x-ray machines. This just gets dumped in my bag along with batteries and pencils and erasers and a bunch of other crap that I always have in this bag. That is, some of it is radio pack and some of it is semi-radio pack. And remember, what they're looking for on those scanners is this shape or the shape of a bomb or, or any number of weapon looking things. This looks like nothing, right? And yet I have a holster with me at all times in my bag. That's why I carry this. Um, I know that I'm presenting things to you guys that some of you have never even thought about. And that's good because these are things that I want you to think about. So once again, should you change your EDC when you travel? No. Do you have to change your EDC when you travel? Yes. Depending on if you're doing air travel or if you're doing vehicle travel. If you're doing vehicle travel, you're golden. You can have a couple of pistols with you, which you always should. You should have a couple of pistols and extra 21 rounders. That's what I carry. I, I carry four of these, two pistols with 15 round mags in them, two, uh, two Glock 19s. But if I'm traveling by air, everything stays at home. Blades stay at home. Everything stays at home. Um, and actually, you know what? A great, a great thing to do from the blade standpoint, um, because this is not a knife that is easily accessible just anywhere. There is a company that makes a, um, I believe it's Minuteman Defense, that makes a little scabbard holster like this for a paring knife that is easily accessible at any cutlery store, meaning like, um, like a restaurant supply store, grocery stores. These are simple little paring knives. You're going to see it right here. Um, 
these are simple paring knives as you see here they're easily accessible everywhere and anywhere and uh, as I recently uh, read somewhere if you're gonna be the guy who goes and buys that knife buy a block of cheese and a stick of salami while you're at it don't be that guy you know buy some stuff that is that creates kind of visual cover for that blade that you're buying but guys there there are so many options out there for EDC uh, for traveling with an EDC mindset that don't really have to involve firearm and um, you know guys there are so many options out there that are that will allow you to travel with an EDC mindset without having to really be firearms focused because remember um, EDC EDC while it means everyday carry really ought to be ought to be more like you know everyday combative is really more the mindset that I like to say to people which is what EDC really ought to stand for everyday combative your idea is at all times to be switched on I, I don't mean like hyper vigilant I mean just switched on man head up not staring at your device all the time just head up moving around looking at everybody and just making sure that that um, that you're not a target because of the way you're dressed or what you're driving or what you're carrying but um, but that you're ready to move at a moment's notice. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them below in the sec in the comment section. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them below. And, uh, and in this case, I should say, uh, as always, God bless you all. Get those. If you guys have any if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. As always, I thank you guys for watching, and in this case, I would say get your gear out and practice. Have a good one.